Okay, welcome to customizing GIMP. I have the interface open right now. These are all based on individual preferences. So I'll show you how I like it, to have it set up and then you can tweak it to your own liking and your own workflow. But the first thing you need to decide is, do you want it in single window mode, which is what I have it in right now. Everything is displayed in a single interface. You can change that from single window mode to multi window mode by simply unchecking this box right here where it says single window mode. So if I uncheck that, now everything is in multi-window mode as you can see so let me shrink this window pane real quick so now you can see that instead of a single window mode my layers dialog my tools dialog there with layers and with channels is a window of itself and my tool options over to the left is another window unto itself and then my image window, my viewport, is an image unto itself. We'll go ahead and maximize that. So, so now if I go up to file and I say open, and I opened a open a second image, it opens into its own window. Now I can see instances, I guess, where that would be advantageous. But for me, the single window mode, I think, is for me, is the cleanest, most efficient, less cumbersome interface. So I'll go back in here to Windows, single, single window mode. I'll maximize my image again. And so, does that, I don't know. For me, that's, that's a better workflow for me. I'll go ahead and close out the second image. But now everything is all configured in a single large window pane. It's all tied together. That's a lot easier for me to deal with. Now we want to go into um, units. Depending on what type of units you want to use. Now I have already selected pixels as my unit. But you could select inches. You could select millimeters, points. Pikas, typographical pikas. That's completely up to you. That's your preference. I, I by default, I want my unit of measure to always be in pixels. There are certain times if I am configuring my uh, image that I'm working on for print, I'll switch between pixels and inches because I'm typically going to print the image in uh, resolution of images, you know, so it will fit in a standard photo frame. All right, so let's go back into our, let's go into our preferences now. And system resources, I have a minimum undo level of 10. I think it defaults to eight, maybe five. I think it defaults to eight though. But I set my undo level for 10. So it's going to keep track of all the actions that I've done. The last 10 actions that I have completed on an image. So if I need to undo something, I can actually go back 10, 10 steps back to undo something that I've done. For me, 10 is a good number for undo levels because I figure if I've messed something up, I should probably realize that by the time that I get 10, 10 steps away from it. Maximum undo memory, I've got it set for 200 megabytes. Now, if you hover over this, it will tell you. This sets an upper limit to memory that is used per image to keep operations on the undo stack. Regardless of this setting, at least as many undo levels as configured can be undone. So... Depending on the memory that's going to be required for your 10 my 10 undo levels, it will reserve that much memory, regardless of what I have set here. If 200 megabytes is not enough, my undo levels is going to override that limit. So you won't have to worry about that. 
Maximum new image size, 128 megabytes. That's a pretty large file for me. That would be a lot of different layers with a lot of different images to, to, to be able to hit that limit of 128 megabytes. If you find that, if you get a warning from GIMP that you're hitting your limit, you can always come in here and you can modify it. All right, number of threads to use. This is your CPU threads. I've got mine set for 12. You can use, you can check the box for hardware acceleration. GIMP is fast, even without hardware acceleration. And it says here that, you know, it's experimental, expect slowdowns and possible crashes, you know. So why would I want to, why would I want to, um, uh, check the box to use hardware acceleration if it's actually going to slow it down or maybe cause a crash. So, so I'm leaving that unchecked. Maximum file size for thumbnailing. I can't remember what it defaults to, but it's pretty low. I think it defaults like four megabytes. Now, most of my images after I edit them are somewhere between 10 to 18 megabytes in size. So I set my limit here to 20. Image, import, and export. Okay, so my default, I left everything else as default, but my default image format that I like to export to is PNG. PNG is a lossless format, which means it doesn't lose any of the clarity from GIMP's native file format. It supports full color and transparency. It's an awesome file format. So that's what I default to exporting my images to this PNG. Tool options. I have mine set to save my tool options on the ex on exit. So if there's something, some dialogue that I don't have open at the time that I load GIMP and, and I load that dialogue, either I, I load an additional dialogue or I load an additional tool, I want GIMP to save that configuration when it exits. So the next time that I open it up, it has that tool that I've added to it or that dockable, you know, dialogue uh, that I've added to it. I want it, I want that loaded the next time. If you mess something up, you can always reset your tool options to the default values and then go back and customize it again. Okay, so default image size. Most of the images that I deal with, 1920 by 1080, 1080p. I've got it set for pixels. I've got my X and Y resolution set to my monitor resolution, which is 100 pixels, you know, per inch. You know, left to right, top to bottom. An RGB color format, that's the standard 8-bit per channel, 24-bit color images. Uh, perceptual gamma, built-in RGB. And I want mine filled with transparency. And then I've also got a comment down here. So my new default image will have will have that dimension, that, uh, pix that number of pixels per inch. And it will also have a transparent background and this comment that I've set down there. And you can, you can set that for whatever you want. The theme, I've got mine set for the dark theme. And... You can set it for gray, and it really depends on what kind of icon theme and stuff that you use. You can use it light, you can use system. I like the dark format. That's what I have mine set to. And then you also have icon theme. You can set it for color. You can see the icons will change. You can set it for symbolic, symbolic high contrast. Symbolic inverted, which you can't see on a dark theme. And symbolic inverted high contrast, which you can't see. But I like the, uh, I like the legs, legacy icons in GIMP. I just, I think that the, looking at those icons, for me, it's easier to recognize what each one of these tool options represents here. So that's the way I have mine set up. Toolbox. Now here is where you can add not all these tools are going to be visible. So you see this little eye that they've got on the left-hand side. And you have some tool options that are grouped, which is why you have this little white triangle in the lower right-hand corner. That's telling you there's 
there's additional options like this one is move and align. So if you look at the first group here, that was where that's where move and align are located. Now, you can if you, if it's a tool that you don't think you're going to use or you don't use very often, and you you want your interface you know as minimal as possible, you can just uncheck the eye. And so now you see, I only have one option there. It's align. I don't have move anymore. If I highlight the eye again so that the eye is showing, meaning it's visible. Now I have move and I have a line again. You'll notice though that my icon has changed. So let's disable a line. And now I've got move. And now I will re-enable a line. So it's going to assume the icon of the last item that you had in your group. Either the first item that you added or the last one that you enabled as visible. But you can switch those back and forth just by changing which one is visible. Okay, so now let's scroll down through all of our tools. And you can see I've got all of them highlighted except for the last two. So if I click the little I over here next to offset and watch my, watch my tools over here when I do that. Now you can see the offset is listed over here since I've made it visible. So I'm going to make it invisible again. You'll see it disappear. And I don't use these last two options, but let's assume that I want to use these last two options and I want to group them together. So right down here at the bottom, right down here at the bottom, it says create a new group tool. And you can reorder these if you want to. I'll create a new group. There's a new group. Now I'm going to put my offset in that group and that's the icon that's showing up and then I'm going to take Gaggle operations and I'm going to put it in the group and I'm going to take the offset and I'm going to move it up to the top so now I'm going to make these visible the group is visible and now you see it up here and you also see that now that there's more than one option in that grouping that I have a little white triangle down at the bottom right and so if I left click that and hold it down it shows both of those tools now that is how you group different tools together and you can group them in any fashion that you want to in the way that makes most sense to you most most logical sense to you whatever makes things more efficient for you that's the way you should group your tools together. Okay, so I am going to uncheck those tools because I don't use those tool, tools. But if you wanted to make one visible, if you wanted to group multiple tools together, that's the way you would do it. Okay, so now let's go to Windows Management. I've got... I've got it set for focus, the active, activate the focused image. Okay, so, and save Windows position on exit. So, um, however, I have my window arranged, that's the way I want it to come up the next time. So, I've got it set for save Windows, save Windows position now, or save Windows position on exit. But you can save it anytime that you want to. If you mess something up, you can always go reset save windows position to default value. So you can always go back in and reset these things to default default value if later on you decide that's ah, it's not really what I wanted to do. Okay. Image windows, marching ant speed, show entire image, initial zoom ratio. I forgot to mention in the last episode that you can hold down your space bar and use your mouse, use your left mouse button to pan your image up and down and side to side. So as long as you have the space bar held down, it will do that. You don't have to use your middle mouse button held down to, to grab your image and pan it back and forth and up and down. You can use your space bar with your left mouse button if you want to do that. Okay, so let me see. Is there anything else here? I think that... I think that pretty much covers everything in customizing the interface, everything that I have done 
to make it look the way I want it to look, you know, to choose the theme. I'm using the dark theme. I'm using the legacy icons on the tools, etc. Because I think those icons are easier to recognize what each tool is. You may prefer something else. But um, everything that I've shown you here so far um, in customizing the interface, this is... This is this is the the setup that works best for me, but you guys can experiment with it and see, you know, where you want your your dialogues, what tools you want to show up, what tools you don't want to show up, which ones you want to group together, your theme, your icons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, customize it to your own liking. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next episode.